Hey guys, and welcome back to Flatpak FX. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this Vox style audio meter. Now here I've just created a new composition, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames and about five seconds in length. Now, just before we move on guys, I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one. So if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing. Now, if you're also struggling with After Effects or you find tutorials difficult to follow, I'm also running an After Effects beginner course and I'll put links to that in the description below. Now, there's a few ways we can actually create this audio meter, but to replicate the one that I saw in this Vox video, we're actually going to use a very specific technique. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to start by creating the background. So what we're actually going to do is come up to our pen tool with nothing selected and just draw a line that runs along the middle. Now I can scale this stroke up just so we can see what we're working with here and also make sure the fill is set to white. And then with that layer selected, I'm going to come up to layer and down to pre-compose. And I'm just going to call this one background. And then I'm going to double click and open that layer up. So this is the part where we're going to create that wave moving in the background. And we're going to do it in quite an interesting way. So with that stroke layer selected, what I'm actually going to do is come up to effect, down to distort, and I want to add the wave warp. Then I'm just going to come over here and adjust a few of these settings. I'm going to make this one 77, make this 280 and that's just going to create a bit more of a steady wave and the wave speed I want to drop this down to 0.5. Now if we just play through this you can see that we have the waves moving in one direction. Now the interesting thing here that if we come up to the stroke effect and actually start to drag this higher and higher we can actually separate these two out. So when we get to around a thousand pixels here what I'm actually going to do is take that wave line and just drag it up so that this layer now sits in the middle. Now at the moment we just want to keep that middle section or the bottom half. So what we're going to do is just create another new solid here. I'm just going to make this one black. And I'm just going to move this layer down so it lines up with the top of those waves. And then I want to change the track mat settings to be alpha invert mat. And I may have to click this button here just to reveal what's actually going on. If I scale this up, we can now see that we have our moving background. So we've created that wave effect and it's moving in one direction. So then what we can do is with my solid black background selected, what I'm going to do is actually come up to effect, down to generate and add the gradient ramp. Now I'm just going to set this one to be up the top here. I want my second color, I'm going to drag this up. And I want to make the bottom color solid black. And I'm going to make the top color this lighter gray color here. So we end up with an effect that looks like this. So now we have the wave with the correct gradient and it's moving in one direction. But what we actually want to do is split that so it's got a mirror on both sides. But we're not going to do that in this composition. We're going to go back to our main composition and we're going to take that layer come up to effect down to distort and we just want to add the mirror effect. And if I change the mirror properties to be 180 degrees and drag this little dot into the center here of our screen, if I play through, you can now see we've got that effect playing out in a perfect mirror effect. Now, one last thing we can do here is if I add a solid onto my background, I can then also come up to effect down to generate and add the gradient ramp I'm also going to drag down this starting color here and I'm going to make my end color also be this light gray color here and drag this up very slightly. So now we've got a solid black background with a gradient ramp on it and then we have our waves which also have their own gradient ramp on them. So that's our background completely done. So now we're ready to actually go and add the audio bars effect. Now, before we generate the audio waves, the first thing we need to do is actually bring in or import our song. So here I've just imported a song that I'm going to use. Then we're just going to right click and create a new solid. You can give it a name and then come up to effect, down to generate, and this is the one we want to add here, the audio spectrum. Now you can also add the audio waveform if you want to go for more of that wave look. 
but this is the one that we're going to be using here, the audio spectrum. Now the first thing we need to do is actually link to that song that we imported into our composition. So I just come up here and select that song and I'm just going to drag this across slightly here just so we can get a bit more into the song where we can see a bit more of the waves. And the other thing I'm going to do here is actually drag the maximum height up so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to reduce the amount of audio band frequency and just drag these in very slightly here. And then I want to come over here and actually start adjusting a few of these settings. So these are the settings that I found have worked best for me. But if you go through and adjust to these settings, then you can always go through and then fine tune them or readjust them however you want. So the first thing I want to do is adjust this starting frequency to be one. And the end frequency, I'm going to drag down to 600. And that's just going to get much more of that chunk of the song where a lot more is actually happening. Just makes it look a lot more interesting. You can also adjust the maximum height here, which is the height of these bars. And the other important thing I'm going to do here is actually drag this thickness of the bars up to around 12. And that's just going to make them a lot thicker. And the softness, I'm just going to drag all the way down to zero so that it gives it a really hard edge. Now for the actual colors, you can use whatever color you like, but if you want to match exactly what they've used in the Vox video, these are the colors that you'll need to use here. You can just enter in that exact number and that'll give you the exact color that I'm currently using. And then for this outside color, we're just going to use that exact same color as well. So now we have the bars as a solid color. Now the next thing is we want to create a bit of a white glow that goes around the edge of our layer. So we do this by creating an inner glow. So with that layer selected, I come up to layer down to layer styles and I want to add an inner glow here. Then I can come down here to the effects and actually adjust the color to be a solid white. Now at the moment it actually looks pretty good but if you wanted to adjust the intensity of that you could drag the size up or down but I find that that looks about right to me and you can just see what it's actually doing when I click this effect on and off. It's just giving it a really nice soft white edge and from a wider view, it just makes it look a lot better. So now that we've got that, the last part of this is I actually want to create the light beams that are sort of shining behind our waveform. So what we do is we take that same wave that we've just created and we're just simply going to duplicate it. Then with that back layer selected, I'm going to come up to effect down to blur and sharpen and I want to add this, the CC radial fast blur. Then what I can actually do is take this little center icon here and just drag this down. And the other thing I'm going to do is also drag the amount up to be around 80. And if I take this layer, I can shrink it down very slightly and just slightly off center it. The other thing you can do is also compress this slightly. And then you can just mess around with fine tuning that adjustment until you get the look that you're actually going for. So now when we play through, you can see that we actually have our finished effect. Now one little tip that I picked up here along the way is that if you actually come over here to your audio spectrum settings and actually adjust the audio duration up, that'll make the effect look a lot smoother. Now you'll need to make sure that they both match the top and the bottom layers, but it just makes that animation appear a lot smoother. So there you go guys, that's how you create this effect. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more tutorials over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.